just make a quick announcement that I see a bunch of people with um, mics on. So if you would not mind just muting your mics before I turn it over to Kevin and Kara. Hi everyone, I'm Kevin New I'm joined with Kara Smith. We are both a first or second year strategy students, not first year. And we are also interns at Terry and Sandy. And um, I want to just quickly say again, thank you, Emma, for the intro. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, please put it in the group chat. Uh, Kara and I will be monitoring it throughout the speech, but also at the end as well, where we have a so we'll have some time for a quick Q and A. Um, but that said, that's not the first time Kara and I have worked together on a project. This past summer, we have been interning together at one of the best, arguably, but in my opinion, and truly, I think a fact, best agencies out there, Terry and Sandy, who we are joined with today at our uh, weekly Friday forums. So Friday forums are known for bringing the other pioneers in the industry, thought leaders and impact makers of today and tomorrow. And today's conversation is no different. We are joined with Terry Meyer and Sandy Greenberg, co-founders of the award-winning agency, Terry and Sandy, ranked as the number one most effective independent agency in North America in 2020. So I first heard of Terry and Sandy like three years ago, back in 2018, actually around this time, because it was around Halloween, I remember. And I walked into their Broadway office and it was the coolest thing. People had their dogs, everything was pink. It was like the best thing. And back then I wasn't sure if I wanted to be a strategist or an accountant or even an art director, but one thing was for sure, I definitely wanted to work at Terry and Sandy. That was, it was so fun. I wanted to be part of this exciting, thrilling work environment where everyone was just so nice. And I mean, it came true. Fast forward three years later, I walked into their stunning new office over in financial district and it's the funniest story. I walked in, I saw Terry and Sandy like standing there and they're like in the glass room and I like froze. I was, like this feels like so surreal and I just like I stepped elevator elevator and stepped back in because I was so nervous seeing them someone had to pull me out and then immediately when I met Austin I felt like I was part of this amazing family and immediately since then we've just felt like everything at Terry and Sandy has always been so welcoming and so warm and so today we want to welcome you all with the same open arms that you welcomed both of us with to get the back um, invite on Terry and or background on Terry and Sandy. Um, Terry Meyer and Sandy Greenberg have spearheaded some of the most beloved and successful advertising campaigns in America, including Oreo's Milk's Favorite Cookie, Disney's Dream Big Princess, and Gerber's Anything for Baby. Their work has permeated pop culture, landing feature stories on Good Morning America, People, Live with Kelly and Ryan, Access Hollywood, and Conan. This fantastic duo who jokes that their creative partnership has outlasted many marriages over 25 years, rose through the ranks at DM. B and B, JWT, and FCB before they started Terry and Sandy 10, 11 years ago. Champions for female empowerment, Terry and Sandy speak widely on the topic. Their motto, if you don't have a seat at the table, build your own table. And they have built a table. I've worked at Terry and Sandy for almost six months now, and not once have I felt like my voice and my opinion wasn't valued. So even as an intern, I felt that way. I'm thrilled to introduce to you, Terry Meyer and Sandy Greenberg. Kara, Kevin, you guys are making me cry. <laughs> We're so, we feel so lucky to have you and you're just doing an exceptional job. So thank you for the wonderful kind words. Hi, I'm Terry Meyer. Um, and we're so excited to be here at VCU Brand Center today. And I'll let Sandy introduce herself. Hi, I'm Sandy Greenberg. Yes, we are big fans of VCU. Look at Kevin and Kara, by the way. How amazing are they? Do they seem like they're interns? They don't to me. Right. I, I, I gen, I've seen them many, many people in my career, and these guys are superstars and far, far ahead uh, uh, of their time in the business. And you guys at VCU gave us this amazing talent. Um, 
and I, I never want to let them go. So we're really happy to be here today. We also have several other folks at the agency now who work here full time. Joey Ha from VCU, Colin O'Shea and Patrick LaPera, who Terry told me is actually in the office today. We went back to our office uh, two weeks ago, two days a week. So folks are actually coming in now. We've been having these amazing lunches. So everybody can meet everybody because it's very bizarre. Like we have people that are, we've been Zooming with for two years, like uh, who we have never had the pleasure of meeting. And of course you meet them and you're like, wait a minute, you're six four. Why have I always imagined you at five foot 10 or whatever? And uh, that's just been amazing. So we're really happy to be here today. I think we're gonna go and put our presentation up now and I'm gonna turn it over to Terry. Great, so today we're gonna to talk to you about building Terry and Sandy from scratch into an ad age A-list standout agency, which is kind of an amazing founding story. So first, let's go back in time. Okay, it's 2010. After 25 years in the big agency world, Sandy and I put on our magenta heels and we clicked, clicked them twice and set out on a new path. We started Terry and Sandy, which was one of the few creatively runs and female run agencies in, in the country. And at that time, we never ever imagined that one day we would, we would really go on to garner one of the most prestigious honors in the advertising industry. Which is becoming an ad age A-list standout agency. And yes, I am horrified to admit that is a picture of me that somebody in our agency comped and uh, they're still being punished for, for, for that photo. Uh, in case you don't know what the ad age A-list is, Ad Age describes it as, you know, in this way, we want to recognize the people, brands, and agencies who've inspired and, and moved us in the last year. So it's an extremely prestigious recognition. Literally only about 30 agencies uh, in the world end up on the A-list each year, many of the most famous in the industry. But wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to where Terry and I first met. Okay, so horrifying picture once again, admitting <laughs> that this is actually us. Uh, <laughs> I think we both look better today. Our partnership began under the arch in St. Louis, Missouri. Yes, that's where the arch is. And that was about 25 plus years ago. And as um, I think Kara said, or maybe I, I don't remember who or Emma, um, we often joke that our partnership has outlasted many marriages. We were both at the time working at an agency called DMBNB, which was was one of the five biggest agencies in the world. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist anymore. But we became best friends before we worked together. And we were put on a few projects together and we really clicked. But pretty quickly before we became official partners, I moved to DMB and New York. I just had to do it. It was a dream to go to the biggest market in the world. And I'd been there for three months and I needed a writer partner. My writer partner decided he wanted to be an art director again. So I was pretty audacious at the time. I called up um, the chief creative officer, whose name is Richard Levinson. And I said, it's my birthday Monday. Are you getting me the present I want? And lo and behold, on Monday, Sandy was delivered to me with a giant, no kidding, a giant yellow ribbon. And it was funny. We then went on to spend many years together in the big agency world. We went from DMBNB to J. Walter Thompson and then on to Foucault and Belding. And, we were really, really lucky because we always moved as partners. You know, we, we did great work on major craft brands like Oreo cookies, Chips Ahoy, Fig Newtons, Milk Dome Dog Biscuits, as well as Gerber baby food. And you may wonder, what is that piece of like machinery sitting there in the middle row on the far right? Well, that's a train heating and cooling system. One of our um, old clients went there and, and hired us. Um, so we did train heating and cooling. And of course, you know, before the digital revolution, there was actually film that you put in a camera. So Kodak was, was the biggest brand of film at that time. And we did some of our best work on Kodak film. And we learned a ton during this time. You know, one of the most important things, and it was a lesson that is really really done well for us our whole career, was to forge close relationships with clients. And this involved, first and foremost, really knowing their business inside and out. So they looked at us as true business partners. But we would also do fun things. Like one of our favorite clients landed a job as the CEO of Pennzoil. 
<laughs> so we wanted to show them that we could get our hands dirty and we had motor oil skills. So we sent him this photo of us and he um, proudly hung it in his corner office. It was it made his current agency really, really nervous, but it actually hangs in our office still today. We also send hundreds of Christmas cards from us as a team, something our clients would be sure to remember because what other creative people did that? And during this time in the agency world, we learned a lot about all aspects of the industry, creative, strategy, production. We also learned what hairstyles work for us and what did not. not. There's not a lot of teams out there, by the way, go back for one sec, not a lot of teams out there who will have this many photos through this many years of, of, of working together. And I think Terry's right. I do think we, I hope we look better today. <laughs> And finally, we got the courage to jump out of the plane and start our own agency. We had reached the level of executive creative directors. Um, what's really interesting is at that time, only 3% of women reached the creative director level. And that's horrifying, by the way. And, and lest you think we're way past that, that was only 11 years ago. And I, I believe we've made progress. I believe the number maybe 13% of all creative directors are women today. But um, for, for, for years, our clients were suggesting to us that we go out on our own. Um, and we decided we needed to leave and we really left for several reasons. One, and most important, and, and, and something I talk about today all the time, which is we wanted to be our own bosses. Second of all, we were sick of the politics. Morale in general at that time was extremely low in the advertising world. It was really, really brutal. Terry and I actually, felt happier when we were at our clients than at our agency. Every day we walked into the office feeling like uh, uh, who was going to come after us that day. So, you know, some of the rumors you hear about advertising are true. It can be a very difficult and political business, but it doesn't have to be. Um, also, we had hit our uh, head on the proverbial glass ceiling more times than we would care to admit. So finally, we left. And we started Terry and Sandy on Terry's dining room table. That's a photo of her living room, which is rather beautiful. It is a beautiful dining room table, but we had no clients and no employees and no nothing. Um, so it was one of the scariest things we've ever done in our lives, honestly. Our goal, as Terry mentioned at the top, was to, we really wanted to start one of the very few creatively owned and operated agencies in the United States, I know it might seem surprising, but there are very, very few exclusively creatively owned and operated agencies in the industry. Um, you'll often find agencies that have say a creative, creative person at the top, but they'll usually have an account person and a strategist along with them at that ownership level. We, we don't, we are exclusively creatively owned. Um, also, when you layer on that we're also one of the very few female owned uh, and exclusively female owned, you, you really end up getting a, a unicorn. You could go ahead. Okay. okay. Also our culture was really of paramount importance to us. You know, we'd seen how big agencies turn through people and we wanted to start an agency where people were happy, well-respected and actually liked each other. It's funny as I think what, what was moving to me that Kevin and Kara said at the top is we've really made it be a place where people are happy and actually like each other. Um, we have a big kitchen table where before COVID, everybody always sat and ate lunch together. And, and it's interesting. I, I think we really do our people really do like each other and it's it's really nice and i think you know in that since we grew up in the big agency world you know we wanted our agency to, to be the antidote to the big agency world and we believe that we've done a great job through the years finding the right talent given that um five of our original hires still work at the agency but and not to brag too much but we have one of the highest glass door ratings in, in the industry it's interesting headhunters are always like wow you have such a high glass door rating and you know that's really important to us so, okay, our next step was planting the seeds for growth. And as we mentioned, um, we had spent our whole career building client relationships. So we started reaching out to former clients, you know, seeking business. And I've got to tell you, honestly, this was one of the hardest things that we had to do, picking up the phone. You know, we were needy, we were vulnerable, but we did it. 
you know, and one of the first people we called was Daryl Brewster, and he was the former president of Kraft Nabisco, and we had created um, Milk's Favorite Cookie, which was one of the most successful global campaigns um, for Oreo with him at the time. And it's interesting because the tagline is still on the package today, and it's still on many trucks that you see cruising around the country. Daryl was on the board of Fresh Pet, you know, and Fresh Pet is the first refrigerated pet food. And it was an underdog really going up against the great Danes of the industry. And we pitched the business in one with a campaign called protest. And we, you'll see here, like we, we let the dogs speak for themselves with protest signs. So like Pomeranians against preservatives, pups against propylene glycol, bark if you hate byproducts, boycott BHA, um, you know, really calling out the additives, chemicals and preservatives that could be found in competitive foods. It was a huge success. And Fresh Pet is an account that we probably still have today, literally 11 years later, and it's the fastest growing pet food in America. So soon, really early on in our agency's life, and I mean earlier than we could ever have imagined, uh, we surprisingly found ourselves slugging it out with the big boys. Uh, and when we, you know, and we mean the most gigantic, renowned agencies in the world. Um, you know, Terry mentioned a craft client, Daryl Brewster. Because we had worked on craft for 10 years, we had built a lot of client relationships. And then those folks went on to all different, they're all now at all different companies all across the world, actually. So another former craft client had a brother at Time Inc you know, which is one of the largest publishing companies in the world. So very early on, I mean, I, it had to be, you know, four to six months after we opened, I remember getting the call from a consultant saying, you know, I'm calling you about a very, you know, a brand and da, 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 da. And when we found out it was People Magazine, such an iconic brand, like literally we never had any idea we'd be working on something that famous so fast. So at that time we had five people five people. Two, two of them were interns. At this point, we were still working on Terry's dining room table, by the way. Uh, nobody knew that, but so um, basically when we had to go meet the clients, we went over to this very fancy, ultra secure Time Inc. building. Um, and um, when you check in, you can't see who else has been checking in. They hide it from you. Uh, they hide that paperwork or the computer from you. Uh, and so um, I leaned in uh, on one of our first visits, trying to find out who else was up there. You know, who were the other agencies? And I saw that Mullen and Arnold were on the list. And um, I literally like started having a breakdown, you know, with Terry going, oh my God, you won't be on the list. You won't believe who we're pitching against. You won't believe who's on the list. It's Mullen, it's Arnold. Uh, and so we literally went into that meeting knowing, you know, we had five people and they probably, they had 5,000, you know, they had offices all over the world. We had three people at a dining room table. So, um, you know, and what was amazing is uh, we went through a few rounds and we got to the end and we learned that actually Mark, Mullen and Arnold were out and now it was down to two agencies, two agencies, us and the Martin Agency. Now, I just want to tell you that the Martin Agency is one of my personal favorite agencies in the whole world. And so here we go again, you know, there's three of us. The Martin Agency has offices all over the place with hundreds of people. And in the end, guess what? We won. Uh, I, I mean, when I look back on these times, I just have to tell you guys, we did not set out to do this. We, you know, you often will hear, well, you better know what you want and you better know where you're going or you're gonna fail. Well, I'll just tell you, I had absolutely no sense in the entire universe that we would be beating the Martin agency four years after we were in business and we were still sitting on Terry's dining room table. And yet that is precisely what occurred. <laughs> wow, it's fun going down memory lane. So our next win was the iconic Easter candy peeps. Um, and interestingly enough, as Sandy said, this is another former craft client. And she ended up at the small privately held company called Just Born Candy. And she awarded us this business with no pitch. And I, I think it, this is a trend and this is just definitely a lesson. It's like your client relationships, building these client relationships will serve you well. Because all these clients from craft really help us build a business. 
So we're, now we're up to three wings. That came. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It was sort of like echoing here. So, okay. So these three wins came from former clients that we developed deep relationships with the craft. And um, it was incredibly meaningful to us because it was, it was funny. Every time somebody came through the door who was an old client, it was like old home week. It was like, oh my God. And, but it was our business and it was just so meaningful and incredible. So now we want to start sharing some of our work. And as Emma said, I think she sent out a, um, a PDF and I think Kara and Kevin are also going to put the link in the in the chat, but you can check out the case study of one of our very first campaigns for peeps. And if you, when you come back, if you would just like raise your hand so we know that you've watched it, we'll move on.
Okay, is everybody done? Awesome. Awesome, then we'll go on. So after we uh, launched Express Your Peepsonality, it was a big moment for the agency. Uh, we won a bunch of awards with this, this work and um, we even garnered a feature story in the New York Times. And, you know, it's pretty amazing to uh, be featured in an advertising column in the New York Times. Uh, in, our, in our first two years, we were featured, we were featured in six, six columns in the New York Times. Really was on the book. So, um, yeah. So oh, the next the next campaign we want to share is for Barbara Barbara Men's Grooming Salon in Chelsea. And you might ask yourself, how did we get this piece of business? And we have this account because one of our creative directors, JP Gomez, is a co-owner of Barbara with his husband, Xavier Cruz. And we've done several campaigns for Barbara through the years. And each and every one of them has really been about giving back to the community. It's a very community focused um, salon in, in, the, in Chelsea. So this campaign that we're gonna share with you today is called Pay With Your Balls. So take a look at the case study. This is, this is, this is one, our first awards actually for Barba. We actually won a lot of awards for this campaign, including a Clio for Fashion and Beauty. So you can check out the link for Barba. I think in the chat or else on the PDF. And again, let us know when you guys are finished. Okay, great. Okay, so our, our next great milestone was in 2017. You know, we'd done award-winning work for Peeps and Barba, and we'd, we'd won a bunch of new clients, including Dis Disney Princess, which is the largest girls franchise in the world, Wyndham Hotels, and BJ's Wholesale Club. And, you know, for this amazing collection of work and incredible growth, we received the great honor of winning Ad Ages Small Agency of the Year. And this is the top small agency in all of North America. And I, I've got to tell you, this win forever changed our company. Our phone started ringing a lot, you know, because anytime anybody would Google best small agency, our name would come up. And it was incredibly, incredibly meaningful to us. It's, it's like we still today say it was definitely one of the game changing things that happened to, in, in, to the trajectory of our company you know, so far. But if that wasn't enough, we also won another huge honor. Um, the EFI Index named Terry and Sandy the second most effective independent agency in North America. 
But guess who was number one? Droga 5, one of the most prestigious awarded agencies on the planet. It was a great milestone for the agency to land neck right behind Droga 5. And we decided we wanted to do something really big to get our number two status out there. So we stepped back and we realized, wait a minute, Droga 5 was just sold to Accenture and hence they're no longer independent. So as the Cannes Advertising Festival approached, we decided to have a lot of fun with this fact. And the next case study that you're gonna see um, tells the story. So check out Free Droga and again, let us know when you're finished. You know what's interesting? What's interesting about this one? I just want to tell you guys something. I cannot express to you how terrifying this was. You know, um, we were on a roll. We were doing well. There was an aspect, like as as we so the planning of Free Droga was uh, the most stressful, intense, um, thrilling, terrifying week since we've been in business. When we decided that we were gonna do this, there were probably eight of us that just lived in a conference room, um, plotting out every step that we were gonna take. You know, we'll launch this way. No, let's not do that. Let's do this. Then the plane comes, then the this comes. Then we start serving up content. Then we do this. No, that's wrong. Or I, there was a lot of fear on our part of, uh, being disrespectful to Droga, wanting to have the right tone. They, uh, you know, Droga was in a league that we were not in. They are, you know, far, far more awarded, far, far superior to our reputation. And uh, we just kept sort of checking and going. Is it clear that we're joking? Is it clear that, is our tone clear? Are we being reverential enough? Are we, you know, and also like, I would say a couple of days before we launched, I barely slept and thought, why don't we just cancel this? Why are we doing this? Why don't we just, we're doing fine, we're doing well. Why do we need to take this level of risk? What if it blows up? What if people are offended? What if people think it's stupid? What if, so when we launched, um, literally like one minute later, amazing notes started, get, you know, tweets started coming in, RGA, when RGA tweeted, Wait, is you know, it, it, you know, is that a plane flying over? You know, and, and who is this, and what's going on? And um, and and people started 
sort of tweeting and sending us notes and sort of joking with us about it. Uh, I mean, instantly it was, it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling, but before we did it, um, I wanted to back out many times, but uh, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, we moved forward with it and it ended up paying off big time. So um, after Free Droga, our next milestone, Austin, we won a great brand, which you can guess, which is called Nutella. Um, and then several other pieces of new business. Uh, we kind of were on a bit of a new business run at the time. We also won Applegate, which is a natural and organic meat company. So we're gonna just show you a couple pieces of work we created for Twinings and Applegate. Boy, I miss the days when we could be there in person and just play and not have to like look at the clink on, click on the link, but it is what it is, right? So take a look at some Twinings and Applegate. Okay, I think, are we moving on? Yes. yes. Okay, Okay. great. So we had won a lot of new business, as I mentioned. We were doing good work. Twinings was one of the most popular campaigns to ever come out of the agency. And we stepped back. You know, for many years, we had and we dreamed of entering the A-list, but we didn't want to enter until we felt ready. And so we decided we were. And... Um, you know, as I mentioned, the A-list is made up of, of, of about 30 of the most creative, strategic, uh, successful agencies in the business. You have to show growth, you have to show amazing work, and you have to show how you're bettering the industry. And I just want to tell you that the application process is like, it's killer. It takes so much time and effort to fill it out, but we, we gave it everything we had. And guess what? Well, I guess you know that because it was on the front page of the thing. We, we, we made it to the A-list as a standout agency. And, um, you, know, uh, you know, back to sort of these moments where you go, uh, is this real? You know, how, could we ever have imagined that we would, first of all, be on the same list as FCB, which was our former agency. So, um, so FCB where, you know, we, we, we talked about hitting the glass ceiling. It was really nice to, to, um, to end up on the same list. And, and we've actually beat them in several pitches. Um, also on the list, Anomaly, one of the greatest agencies, mother, incredible agency. Gut is, uh, I'm sure you guys all know it, um, a, a relatively new agency, but just incredibly brilliant. And FIG, which is uh, a competitor to us in a lot of different ways, also made the list. So, um, you know, for us, it was a great day in the agency. Uh, we all celebrated and uh, we finally sort of reached our goal of making it to the A-list. 
Yeah, which was which is really amazing. So, you know, in closing, we just wanted to share with you guys some important lessons that we learned on our journey. You know, we think these could be incredibly helpful for you as you embark on your career in this in this in this wonderful business. I mean, it is a wonderful business. You know, as we said, it can be difficult, but it's it's a really wonderful business. And the first one is really build relationships and network, network, network. Brilliant work matters, awards matter, but our business and every business is really about connecting with people on every level. So when you start your first job, make friends with the people around you at all levels. Ask how you can help, over deliver, become indispensable. This also means write thank you notes after interviews, show your appreciation, show that you're passionate about the industry. In the end, your, your reputation is everything and you should start out on the right foot, really creating the best, the best reputation you can. On that thought, um, like, you know, like, so if you have an interview and you think, oh, I don't really know if I care about this person, I'm not gonna write him a thank you note. Keep in mind that person could be running the agency you wanna work at tomorrow. Every single person you encounter is a potential person that will help you, rec recommend you, introduce you to somebody. So I, I have to say that building relationship, by the way, I just want to stress it's work. It's not fun always, but you've got to do it. You've got to push yourself to go out of your comfort zone and thank people, smile, go up to people, say, how can I help you? You know, um, it's unbelievable how when, you know, young people come to work at our company very early on, you, you know, whether it's just by smiling or asking how you can help or always being positive, you quickly earn a reputation and everybody wants to work with that person and people do not want to work with whiners, mopers. So uh, if you are one, try to hide it. <laughs> uh, the second one is be resilient, never say die. You know, all of you out there are passionate and you're passionate about the, the great work that you're going to do. But here's the thing. Your team will do work and it will die and it will die again and again. And advertising is really a mix of art and commerce. And we throw our hearts and souls in everything we do. So the biggest thing is you really need to have tenacity. You know, when clients request changes or kill an idea, you need to come back better and stronger. And let me tell you, this isn't easy. And I think, you know, as, as Sandy said in the beginning, obviously we're two creative people who own this agency and we've been down this road many times so we can really appreciate the upset of it. But one of the key, key traits of a great, whatever you do in the business is having the resilience and the tenacity to come back better. Because, you know, it's sometimes you have work, it's like you've always got to make sure that it's better and not worse because clients can try to make it worse and you've got to like beat them and make sure that it's better. Yeah. Okay, stay optimistic. Um, also be a student of advertising always. Um, you know, you guys are students right now. So of course you're students, you're learning every day, you're seeping up everything you can get your hands on. You're excited, keep that going. You know, be a student of advertising, read communication arts, read Archive Magazine, study the work that wins the Clios and the One Shows and can. Um, by immersing yourself in this type of work, it's inspiring and it ignites your mind and you have something you wanna aim for. And you know, I mean, there's a little uh, sort of jealousy that's natural. Oh my God, that's better than anything I'm doing. Oh, it breaks my heart. They did that and I couldn't do that. And that's true, but it also keeps you thirsting to do better. So always stay a student of advertising. Um, this is our uh, probably the motto that has steered us from the very beginning. There's a quote in a book called The Power of Who. Go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. And we were reading this book very early, you know, either right before we started our agency or right as we were starting it. And it has steered us because we came from a place where we felt that we were not celebrated, where we felt that it was political and brutal and people weren't really wanting the best for us. And we said, we want to start a company where we feel that our clients celebrate us and that the people that we hire do the same. And, and, and importantly, we wanted to treat people this way. We wanted to pe make people feel that they were appreciated. And so what we wanna to say to you guys is, um, 
if you go out there and you get yourself a job and if somebody makes you feel if, 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 if the place not just one person but the place makes you feel really bad about yourself if you feel beat up and like you're not appreciated and this keeps happening then you're not in the right place get out fast um it you know maybe a really good place and maybe it doesn't make other people feel that way but if you feel that way it's not healthy and you there's a better place for you to be better place actually for both sides the agency and you and go find a better place and finally enjoy the ride uh let's face it there's a there's not a lot of businesses where you can sit around for hours throwing around ideas wearing jeans even ripped jeans, sneakers, and flip-flops in the summer. The best part of this business in our minds is the people that you'll work with. They're amazingly talented, eccentric, smart, artistic, um, funny people. And we're lucky to be in advertising. So have fun, enjoy the ride. And thanks so much for joining us today. It was awesome to be with you guys. Uh, look forward to meeting each and every one of you maybe one day. Uh, Thanks so much. So now we're, we'll take questions from the audience. I think Joe has a question. Do you want to unmute and ask? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hi, Terry. Hi, Sandy. Thank you so much for your, your presentation today. Um, it's it was really incredible how you two kind of found yourself found each other um, in very early on in your career um, and it's so rare to find you know your person in your work um, when we're all out in the world in the working world what do you suggest we look for in a partner um, uh, when it comes to like finding that creative person that is um, as someone has called our ace in the working world if you have any suggestions because not all of us are going to be as lucky as the two of you to just happen to run into each other like that you know i i think one of the most important things is mutual respect you know the fact that you you respect each other i think also the fact that the person makes you better like i was i'm never as good by myself as i am with sandy so you know having that person that really is additive to you and to, to who you are, I think is important. I think having um, having different sensibilities, but common sensibilities. So you're so that, you know, and again, that comes down to mutual respect so that you can accept something that you might not see in the beginning, but then you sort of wrap your head around. But I think um, really sort of understand, obviously it has to be someone that you enjoy spending a lot of time with because we spend a lot of time, um, obviously, in this business of ours. So I think that's important too. Somebody you actually really like. Yeah, we 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 were not first partners. Terry and I had, I don't know, somewhere probably between probably around five to eight partners before our partnership stuck. Uh, again, you know, I think it seems to be a theme of this this talk, which is I don't think we knew at the beginning. We would never ever have known that we would stay together this long, oh. right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think we expected it. I think that we shared a common drive. We were both intensely driven, as you can imagine, right? You, you better be, if you're going to own an agency, you better be very driven. Um, we were both optimistic kinds of people that always felt like it can be better. We can try harder. We can do better, you know, like that, 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 but like didn't let the disappointment crush us. I mean, they did crush us, you know, and we would have down days we down weeks and stuff like that. But the other thing that's interesting is that we do complement each other so that like we're, Terry would say, and I think this is really interesting. There's no weak link between us. So like we each have, have different strengths, but like if we need to get something done, like maybe I'm in a really bad mood and I'm really, we have to deal with a certain client and I'm really done. I've tried everything. I've given up. The person's terrible. I'm done. Let's, let's resign them, you know, like then we can bring in Terry to try, you know, cause she, she's got, she's, she hasn't been dealing with it as much. So she can step in and try to go into it with a new attitude and try again. And we're often, we've been that way for years, which is, I can't do this anymore. Will you do this? I can't call this person today. Will you call them? You know, and this is more senior stuff, but let's go back. Let's go back to when we were writer and art director. 
similar sort of stuff, right? One of us might be in a better mood to push the other person, but you need that, you need that um, other person who's equally strong because if there's a weak link in a partnership, it will show up, you know, like just somebody who isn't quite as smart or isn't quite as talented or isn't quite as driven or isn't quite as optimistic and keeps weighing you down, that person will slow you down in your career. And also I think it, it creates resentment too, because you're like, wait a minute, like, why am I doing all this? You know, I, I have never, ever at one point in time ever felt like, like I was put upon and Sandy wasn't doing her fair share ever. And I think that's really important. Excellent. Thank you both so much. I think we have a question from Leanne Dancy next. Yeah, so I am um, in the experience design track um, at the Brand Center. Um, and as an experience designer with an interest in leaning a little bit more towards art direction, how do you really see experience design fitting into a traditional agency setting as the world of advertising changes with technology? Wow. Um, you know, in all honesty, I don't think I'm the expert on experience design. You could probably teach me, quite honestly, um, about it. But I would say that any, I think that trying to broaden yourself to, to, to even art direction too would probably be a good thing because while experiential design is really hot right now, it might not always be. So I think the more tools you have in your toolbox, probably the better off you'll be. I would also say if you're going to use the word design and designer, Every single thing you better you better make everything beautiful <laughs> or well does let's not say beautiful but impeccably designed. So like every now and then I'll see like a designer or, or an art director's website who says they want to become a designer, and the website isn't it, it's not stunning. So like everything you do should be stunning. Every piece that you put out should be impeccably designed and art directed and. Um, and the same thing, everything you present when you get to where you want to go um, has to be really th thoroughly thought out and also have an intelligent purpose. So not just design for design's sake, but uh, why did you choose this typeface? Why did you ch choose this look and feel? That makes sense. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. I love what's behind you, by the way. Oh, thank you. Speaking of impeccable design, it looks awesome. And you picked our colors close to it. <laughs> yeah, close to our colors, not quite as magenta. Not quite as magenta, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question if anyone wants to ask. Um, Craig, I think Craig has a question. Hi, uh, thank you so much for coming to speak with us today. One question that I had was, as uh, people who had gone into entrepreneurship, what do you think entrepreneurship taught you about branding and about selling yourself? Because, you know, we're all going to have to sell ourselves very soon when we graduate. Wow, you know, I think we came the opposite way. I think that we came up through the big agency world um, like as Sandy said, we never in our mind thought, oh, we're going to go start an agency. It just, you know, we liked being in the big agency world. I think it was, you know, the politics and everything that started dragging us down. But we realized that, I, and I think this is a good lesson from when you begin, we realized that we were very entrepreneurial. We were just doing it for a bigger agency. You know, we always had the biggest group in the agency. You know, we always were winning business and, you know, and that was sort of our mission. But I think even to just break it down and look at selling yourself from the very beginning, wherever you are, whether you're on your own or in a big place, is, is making a reputation for yourself and really finding ways. You know, I think we said it before, you know, to make yourself indispensable and to, to make yourself stand out. So I think it's, it's just like in the work that you do and how you sort of behave, just really creating that sort of trajectory that you're seen as, you know, as a person of meaning, you know, as, as you sort of go through your career and somebody that people want to help and people want to see succeed. I also think that the, the sort of the theme that we've talked a lot about of relationships and networking 
is probably one of the key things to being a successful entrepreneur. Because first of all, when you start, you, you always need to be able to call people for advice. So you, you need sort of your, your colleague friend network of, I need to get do this. How do I do this? You know, help me out here. Uh, you need to lean on people. Then you've got your, your, your network of, uh, I'd really love to work at this agency. Who do I know that could help me get an interview there? You know, and that means your, you know, your brother's friend. That means somebody you went to school with. That means your next door neighbor. But those, that networking, I, I have to believe it's got to be the most, you know, uh, one of the key parts of being an entrepreneur. Um, and I think, you know, I mean, you've just got to be, you've got to be more driven. You've got to be smarter. You've got to have more energy, tons of energy to keep going and going and going because the competition is brutal, right? Do you think the world needs another creative person? Does the world need another advertising agency? No. So it's like, you've got to do something that distinguishes yourself. You've got to give more. You've got to try harder. Thank you. Now we're coming up on time really quick, but before we do, um, I want to take a really quick group photo. So can everyone just like turn your cameras on and smile really quick and we can take a quick screenshot. Okay.